Hello, welcome to another YouTube science lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at weather. And this is going to be a multiple part series in our video lessons as we look at today humidity and convection currents. Now we're going to look at the instruments that actually measure humidity in our atmosphere. And humidity is really important, especially relative humidity, which says exactly how much water is in our atmosphere and what are the chances that we're going to get precipitation in the form of rain or snow, sleet or hail. We're also going to be looking at convection currents. Now convection currents are basically formed by warm and cold air coming from different parts in our world and how these two different types of weather fronts or warm and cold fronts come together to kind of fight for the space that they're in and also create disturbances in our atmosphere. So look at this particular series today and I hope you learned something and enjoy a little bit about what you see. Now this particular clip that we're going to look at right here, we're going to be looking at how smoke uh, is basically utilized in uh, showing how convection currents work. So basically what we've done is we've set up this aquarium. And the aquarium has candles burning in one end and it does not have anything on the other end. Now we sealed up the top of the aquarium and put two chimneys in the top. Now one chimney is going to be directly above the candles and the other one is basically open to the atmosphere and the air in the room. And so what's happening basically is as the hot air is warmed inside the aquarium that has the candles on it, it's going to rise up out of the aquarium. Now, because the air is rising up, it would create a vacuum if we were to re release air without having other air come in to replace it. So the colder air on the other side of the aquarium is coming in through the vent, basically, or the chimney on the other side of the aquarium, and it creates a light convection current that comes through. Now, we can't see this, of course, so we need to have something that we can identify the current with. And the current is basically going to be identified in the aquarium by utilizing some incense that we burn and we put in the top of the chimney that's on the cold side. Now essentially what's happening is as the cold air is being pulled in to the aquarium to replace the warm air that's coming out on the other side, we're going to see smoke coming through and creating a basically a convection current so that we can see it. Now this essentially is what works in the atmosphere. We have convection currents all the time. Basically we have warm air that's coming out of the tropical side of the earth, basically all around the equator, that is constantly rising up because it receives the most sunlight regardless of the season. So that's the warm tropical air. Well, it always competes against the colder, more dense air that's coming off the north and south poles of the Earth. So we consistently have these convection currents that are continually cycling through our atmosphere and causing weather adjustments and also causing storms in the clouds that build up during these storms. And so this is basically how convection currents are formed. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to be basically looking at psychrometers. Now, psychrometers are basically an instrument that's used by weather forecasters to determine the relative humidity in our atmosphere. Now, relative humidity essentially is how much moisture is in the air based upon how much moisture the air can hold at a given temperature. Now, in class today, we actually made some psychrometers. Basically, we used two thermometers and we set them on the outside of some uh, tubs so that they wouldn't come in contact with the table. And we wet one end with a cotton swab that was uh, put in water, and then we left the other side dry. And we put this in front of a fan in our classroom, and we were able to use a chart based upon the differences in the two temperature readings. And based on those two temperatures, what a relative humidity would be in the room. Now this is what uh, weather forecasters or meteorologists would use if they were using a handheld instrument. Basically this handheld instrument is used in their hand and put on a string and slung around outside. And they basically would have one side of the thermometer that would be left wet, and the other thermometer that would be left dry. And by using the same calculations we used in class, you would determine the relative humidity at the atmosphere in that given area. So I hope this helps with how, how to read relative humidity and what a psychrometer is. You can find many more lessons that I've created on my YouTube. Simply go to my YouTube channel. Easiest way to find it is do a YouTube search. Look for a HP ISD Haze. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed it or learned something, please leave me a comment. Thank you.